Hello and welcome to the Economic Times GBS Disruptix TV series, wherein we showcase trailblazing enterprises transforming India's business landscape. In this episode, we present to you a company that is disrupting traditional work culture in India by focusing on technology, hospitality, design and member delight, all in the form of configurable workspaces. Working in a traditional office set with poor aesthetic design and limited flexibility not just affects employees' energy levels, but it also tends to create a dysfunctional employee culture. The commercial office space in India was in dire need to be disrupted, and this led to the entry of the smart entrepreneur duo with the smart idea of curating smart office spaces, and they named the company SmartWorks. And indeed, it works. Nitish Sarda and Harsh Binani were at the zenith of their careers when they decided to change the dynamics of the office setup and its culture. Inspired by high employee engagement levels in offices in the US and Singapore, SmartWorks was launched in 2016 with the vision of creating a workspace for the future by investing heavily in state-of-the-art infrastructure, stimulating workspace design and latest office technologies combined with value-added services to deliver a personalized WOW office experience. Today, SmartWorks is India's largest provider of agile workspaces, with a footprint of over 4 million square feet across 31 locations in nine metropolitan cities. Catering to over 400 organizations, SmartWorks is home to global enterprises, SMEs, and high-growth startups alike. Its journey from a small 10,000 square foot area to now spanning over 4 million square feet is nothing short of phenomenal. SmartWorks has emerged as the second largest player in terms of market share and has become the undisputed leader in the enterprise flex space. And we caught up with its founder and co-founder to understand their approach to curating workspaces that work for you. So Nitish, let me kick off the conversation with you. Five years ago, SmartWorks was just another player in the flex space segment. But today, all of that has changed. It ranks second in its sector with 14% market share. So naturally, my first question to you is, as a company, are you eyeing your number one competitor in the space, WeWork, and looking to displace their position? So for us, what is important is how, how far we've been able to grow so far. Uh, we've grown very quickly to get to the four plus million square foot that we have under management. Sure. And how we're different than most of the other co-working players uh, generically, which is a very competitive landscape by the way. There are more than uh, 200 players in, in, in India itself, right? Uh, but what is our advantage in competition is the size of the properties that we take. Uh, an average size of a co-working in India would be 30, 40, 50,000 square foot. SmartWorks goes and acquires anywhere between 300 to 500,000 square foot. Uh, so because of the sheer size of the property, we have the ability of growing much quicker. Um, and because of that, our target is to get to about 20% uh, of market share, hopefully very soon. Uh, yes, we will be displacing someone or the other there, but the idea is to gain more and more market share and get to the 20% target that we have by the end of the year. Well, Harsh, let's build on that. And uh, what would help me understand the journey of this company are some of the most major milestones in its growth story. You know, specifically, I'd like to hone in on the transition from a curator of co-working spaces to now a managed office space operator. Absolutely, it's been quite a roller coaster journey over the last five years, building and growing the business to what is now one of the top players in the space. And obviously when we started looking back, it was clearly a David versus Goliath fight with so many different operators. And we've obviously rode through severe competition and obviously the biggest of all, uh, the pandemic. And I've still come out unskated is a testimony to how we've been able to adapt uh, and be agile and responsive to the market needs. And if I had to broadly summarize, uh, we've had three major pivots uh, in the way we've built and grown the business. And obviously each of these pivots have come with their own set of risks. And as they say, without risk, there is no gain. Uh, and primarily, uh, we started off as a co-working space uh, player just like anyone else. But very quickly we realized that if we have to penetrate and make our product addressable to the large enterprise segment of the market, A, we have to source large independent facilities which are way bigger than a floor which typically was leased by then uh, operators. 
second, obviously, we focused uh, entirely on the enterprise segment, which now constitutes more than 95% of our entire base, uh, which otherwise co-working has always been interpreted as a uh, product for startups and freelancers. And then finally, we were very bullish on standardizing and ensuring we have a pan-India presence. Because in absence of that, office space has always been a very local subject with regional players dominating the landscape. And suddenly here is a player which five years back was insignificant and now has very, very meaningfully become a more than four million square foot player with a presence across nine cities catering to needs of more than 400 plus clients who all several of them have multi-city presence with us as well. So that's how the journey has evolved and grown. And I'm sure a pandemic will make us evolve and grow even more. Uh, we are quite excited about continuing to adapt and evolve. Well, Nitish, curious to hear your views here. What do you believe is the underlying strategy that's enabled SmartWorks to, you know, maintain its relevance in this space and continue to hang on to its leadership position ultimately? Sure. I think uh, one of the things that uh, sets us apart from others when we're competing for, uh, for a client is the fact that we're trying to create the client's office in, within our spaces, right? We like to think of ourselves as more of an office experience company rather than just saying that we are any other co-working player. We try to reflect what the clients, understand what the clients really want within their spaces and create that for them in a custom-made solution when we offer that uh, uh, to them in our spaces, right? I think that really sets us uh, apart from anyone else. Also, the fact that we are very, very cost conscious. We understand India as a market, uh, uh, you know, people are very price conscious. They want to make sure that they're not paying a premium, significant premium for flexibility. Absolutely. Our man mantra is very different. Our idea is we need to be more economical than traditional office spaces. We want to create a product which, are, which is there for masses and with scale we are able to reduce costs significantly. So f with keeping that in mind, we, our focus has always been on reducing cost and giving the customers the best experience that they require within their office space rather than just focusing on, on filling up a few seats. And Harsh, you mentioned the pandemic and the pandemic has obviously placed such a heavy emphasis on contactless technology. How has that at SmartWorks influenced your approach to workspace design? It's often said that there are times where it takes decades for a change to come and sometimes it takes weeks for a decadal change to happen. And uh, I'm not surprised at all that pandemic has suddenly really evoked in its occupiers the need to use technology. In this form, it's contactless. However, real estate has not adopted technology at the pace the world has adopted. And particularly, SmartWorks has ensured over this uh, last year and a half that we've taken the highest safety and preventive measures uh, to our enterprise clients who obviously follow a lot of global compliances and protocols. And technology has been a major enabler to ensure that we are able to deliver on that promise. Particularly if I think about the proprietary technology that we've developed starts right from when you enter the SmartWorks premise where an IoT enabled visitor management system screens you for your temperature and mass and throughout all the major touch points whether it's through access controls which are mobile enabled to dispensing tea and coffee which can also happen at a click of a button to booking your meeting rooms or seats even within your office everything is powered by technology today at SmartWorks and obviously our endeavor is to ensure that it is completely contactless and however, having said that, we've also realized uh, that this also requires a fair amount of education and intervention to make sure that the adoption is quite high. Right. You know, with work from home now becoming the new normal, the pandemic has been a bit of a rough ride for all flex space operators. Yet what's so interesting is that smart work seems to have expanded in the wake of this global crisis. So, you know, how have you essentially not only managed to cater to demand, but experience this surge in demand in the wake of the scenario we find ourselves in now? No, absolutely. So I think what uh, the pandemic has essentially done is, right, while obviously it's accelerated work from home, uh, people have adopted that as an other solution for their office spaces. But I think the biggest change that it has done is people now look at flexibility within their workspaces, right? What it doesn't mean that almost 100% of your office is going to shift towards work from home, right? Everyone's saying a certain percentage of their office, whether it's 10%, 15%, 20%, depending on what you do, is going to shift towards work from home or flexible workspace. 
right? Where it's not just restricted to work from home, but work from anywhere. You go to the closest smart work center, uh, which you have to your house, so that you don't have to do that entire public uh, commute. Sure. Or you go three to four days in a week instead of going to uh, from five to six days in a week, right? Uh, but this physical space requirement is still there. What has really enabled us to grow in the pace that we've been able to uh, during this pandemic is the fact that people now want flexibility. We have come up with an options in which you can get that flexibility from a completely customized solution which is closer to your traditional office space. So uh, to give you an example, one of the things that we tried out and, and we've rolled out to our customer is flexibility on seats, uh, lock-in on seats, not lock-in on square footage. Right? Which means basically in traditional cases, uh, someone has taken 10,000 square foot, they're locked into that space for the next five years. We're saying you take 100 seats with us, but you have the ability of downsizing this 100 seats in one location from 100 to 80 and increasing 20 in a different location. That gives you the flexibility of expanding wherever you want, sure. uh, whether it's through different uh, cities or within a city also within different micro markets. So uh, I think the need of the R is flexibility, which is why we've been able to uh, sort of grow at the pace uh, despite the pandemic. It's time for a short break, but the Economic Times GBS Disruptix TV series continues on the other side. We'll be right back. Hello and welcome back to the Economic Times GBS Disruptix TV series. We're in conversation with India's largest workspace provider, SmartWorks. my next question Harsh which is that Millennials are entering the workforce they are climbing their way up the corporate ladder and do you believe that existing traditional office spaces essentially cater to their needs and how does this in turn influence your optimism or perhaps your skepticism around the future of this sector overall you know uh, a question which obviously require there is no right or wrong answer but obviously it is clear that there is a transformation required in how we use our office spaces. And we found in the last few years the level of innovation that you've seen in a traditional office space has not kept pace with the changing requirements of millennials. And why only millennials? There are a lot of individuals who are not in that bracket who also require more adaptability in the system. And that's where suddenly when you see that flexible workspaces which was almost nothing five years back is now almost accounting for more than 5% of the overall commercial office space speaks testimony to the impact that the sector has had on the overall commercial office space segment. And particularly we've been at the forefront of ensuring a lot of transformation by bringing on board a lot of large enterprise clients uh, to adopt a concept like this which otherwise in absence was always confined to the traditional office space. We often joke that you know one of the reasons why we've been able to grow so much and the theme that we've followed over the last you know year or so is that the strong has become stronger exactly. but one of the things obviously has been that Nitish has ensured that he's not taken the virus to any of the cities he's gone to and closed a lot of deals uh, and that has ensured that we've expanded a lot uh, during this entire duration and if you ask me to take a step back uh, are we optimistic I would say we are very very bullish uh, on the growth of this segment and at heart, the reasons which made the sector attractive pre-pandemic have become even more attractive now. And also with respect to uh, what millennials want, right? Both of us have had a varied experience. Uh, Harsh has been in uh, McKenzie in Chicago for almost five years. Uh, I was studying in, uh, in US and then Singapore. Both of us have done our campus visits and all of this. There's a vibe that, uh, you know, offices in the West have been able to create, right? Because there are a lot of startup focused offices and their evolution has been faster than what, uh, what India has been able to adopt, right? And when you look at the requirements of, of new age millennials, we would Fall, probably fall under that, right? Why not? And uh, essentially, uh, our requirement today is not just your workspace and table. We need an entire holistic experience. We want to have all the facilities that we 
require like gyms, crashes, sports zones, all of those things within our spaces, right? It needs to be more interactive. If I'm going to spend eight to ten hours of my day, which is almost one third of my day in one space, it needs to give me more than just a desk and a chair, right? It needs to give me everything that I require. So our our focus is only on workspace experience. Uh, if you look at our, most of our larger facilities, like the one that we are in uh, currently, also it has a, a sports park, right? We've got a, a football uh, court, we've got a cricket net, we've got multiple gaming zones across. So it's not just uh, uh, you know your workspace experience, but it's also interacting with others. We design the space in a way in which it makes becomes more and more interactive. Uh, for everyone who's coming. And if you ask us, I think one of our best parts of the day during the work is actually that one over that we are able to bat during the day <laughs> and ensure that the bowling machine is put to good use and it suddenly makes you realize that, hey look, why does workplace experience have to be so boring? Uh, if I'm able to squeeze in these small breaks and enjoy, uh, I feel so much more productive and refreshed at work. And if you could get that in US, uh, our vision essentially is that why can't we transform it and bring it to India in a much more accessible and affordable form because we realize once you move out of the Googles and Microsofts of the world, how many offices and campuses do you have here which can actually offer an experience like that? Right, and hard to argue with that. It's been said that a company's workspace is a natural extension of its brand. It's a reflection of the company's ethos. You know, to what extent does that sentiment factor into your client acquisition strategy? Completely. Uh, so one of the things that we very quickly pivoted away from, if you look at co-working generally as an option, it's usually prefabbed offices, right? People take up a floor or a part of a building, right? And they create smaller inventories and they let it out. Right. We actually went ahead and did something very uh, opposite to what, what people usually do. What we did was we take up individual buildings, we focused on the common areas first, like your, like what we were talking about, your gaming zones, uh, you know, all the experiential things, your cafes, crashes, gyms, all of those things in the facility. And then the office inside, we went ahead and said that we'll customize it based on the client that is coming in. For example, we have clients like Samsung sitting with us. Now the Samsung office, when you come in, looks exactly like any other Samsung office would, right? It does not shout out SmartWorks, but it shouts out Samsung. Sure. Because the company's brand and ethos needs to be reflected within their space. That's how we attract larger tenants to come and say that, yeah, this is a value prop in which those part of my offices, which I'm not using on a regular basis and does not have to be dedicated to me, I can have that in the common area. But what is dedicated to me needs to be completely reflect what my brand is. And that's one of the reasons our customer acquisition strategy has also been towards enterprises. Because we're customizing the space based on their inputs, their ethos, uh, whatever uh, you know guidelines that they've set out, uh, because of which they're okay to shift their corporate headquarters or regional headquarters into smart works, thus helping us grow quicker than most of the players in the, in the market. Obviously in the company's history, there's been a trigger point or perhaps an aha moment that led smart works to shift its focus from startups to large enterprise clients instead. You know, walk us through the underlying reasoning behind this decision and how high risk did you view this decision at the time? Our mantra has always been profitability and low cost and low cost and we continue have following that curve over the last four years. And I would say the aha moment likely um, has been the fact that a few startups that we dealt with earlier uh, reflected to us that the loyalty factor uh, was not as high and the price sensitivity was such that we knew that they would move to another uh, operator if they were offered a better price and frankly there is not much that you can do to retain that and at the same time we also realized that given the ecosystem the way it is it will take us a very very long time to make a very sizable scalable impact uh, per se and I'm sure Nitish also has a few of his aha moments to share because it's been a combination that has actually got us... Uh... No, absolutely. So I think one of the uh, first aha moments was us when we realized that that market was very competitive. You know, by the time we entered, and this was back in 2016, right, uh, closer to about end of 2016, there were already 300 players in the market. When we were doing a competitive landscape, we were saying that uh, there are 300 players. Everyone is focusing on the same segment, which is your startups and SMEs. Why isn't there someone who's focusing on everyone else? We realized, obviously, with our first 
10 deals that it's very difficult to crack an enterprise right it takes much longer startups usually have the decision makers who who usually take decisions in a couple of days while enterprises usually end up taking that in months right so that life cycle is longer but that the target addressable market is much bigger uh, you're talking about india being 750 million square foot of office spaces 90 percent plus of which is enterprise right so while 200 percent 200 players are focusing on on the 10 percent we said why not focus on the 90 percent because much bigger uh, obviously there were certain challenges there it wasn't that easy to start off with but the initial 10 clients taught us a lot uh, from then getting the 11th 12th and now the 421st has become much much easier uh, but yeah uh, the, the competition was one of the fact that we said that we don't want to do this let's try something different since SmartWorks has seemingly become a profitable, scalable and sustainable company in all of the sectors it operates in, I'd like to understand how your fundraising efforts have helped contribute to these growth milestones. No, absolutely. I think the uh, fact that we were bootstrapped for almost the first two and a half years of our, our operations, right, really helped us understand the nitty gritties of the business better. Uh, we understood where is the highest cost factor going in, where are we getting the most uh, amount of margins and how do we sustain that margins. We were so focused on profitability uh, at that point of time when we were bootstrapped because we knew that growing profitably is the only way in which we could grow, right? Otherwise, every business has a certain, certain constraint. Uh, after that, when we were able to achieve that and we grew profitably, we realized that now there are multiple avenues of uh, of uh, you know private equity funds and other uh, venture cap capitals who are willing to invest into this and hyper grow us from X to 10X, right? Sure. That was the aim at that point of time. We raised our first Series A in, in November 2019 uh, from Keppel Land, Singapore. Uh, and since then we've been growing uh, and you know obviously had the pandemic not hit we would have been much larger and we'd commit, we were on the verge of committing to a lot more properties uh, but essentially with, the, with how things have been we're still being able to grow by 20 to 25 percent uh, last year and hoping this year we'll be ca catching up and going from about 4.2 million to about 6.5 to 7 million square foot. How do you envision the company's roadmap evolving going forward? No, so I think uh, it's very, what we want to create here is uh, a national footprint across India, get to a critical scale, our ambition is to get to about 25, 20 to 25 million square foot spread across. Uh, we've got certain, uh, you know, targeted customers in mind, about two, two and a half thousand different enterprises that we know are sitting across uh, India in different locations and we want to onboard all of them and then I, the idea is we should have a collective workforce of about three to three and a half lakh people working out of uh, different smart works offices right and to standardize that office experience for everyone. Also the ambition is that eventually when people are looking at uh, uh, workspace ecosystem they look at smart works as a as a go-to solution right that's the only solution that you have and once you're within this ecosystem you can never get out i shall give you the final word you know smart works has clearly made its presence felt as a managed office space operator but are you now eyeing parallel business lines and perhaps looking to compete in a parallel industry verticals no absolutely it's a phenomenal opportunity that we see in the coming decade uh, to build on the managed office solution that we've been able to create and our larger vision is to create a platform uh, which is able to create a self-fulfilling ecosystem uh, whether it's facility management or creating a prop core which gets into the business of acquiring assets or largely uh, monetizing a lot of the technology products that we've built across the entire vertical because we realize that real estate technology is also going to be a major subject going forward. So at this point of time, all I can tell you is that both of us are bubbling with a lot of energy and are raring to go and we find a lot of energy in creating new ideas and bringing them to life and this space is giving us enough ideas and opportunities for that. Well, gentlemen, thank you so much for your time and we wish you and your entire team continued success. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much.